Johnny Dollar. Harvey Tilson, Mr. Dollar. Tilson? Yes, sir. Prime Mutual Insurance Company. Yes? I hold down the office here in Uniontown, Pennsylvania. Oh, I see. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Tilson? Well, if you're free, I wish you'd come on down here. Well, what's the problem? I want to be sure we don't pay out a lot of insurance to the wrong person. What kind? Straight life. Well, how much, Mr. Tilson? One million two hundred thousand dollars. What? One million two hundred thousand dollars. Can you take it on? Sure can. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Tri-Mutual Insurance Company Limited Uniontown office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the wrong sign matter. It was late afternoon when Harvey Tilson called me. It was a good deal later before I could arrange for some awkward plane connections from Hartford to New York to Pittsburgh, PA. Plane fare is item one, $29.40. Because of a long stopover in New York, it was dawn by the time we hit the landing strip at the greater Pittsburgh airport. Item two is $1.70 for some early breakfast. And item three is the usual 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. I took my time driving 45 miles down Route 5 to Uniontown. And there I found that Tilson's office is in the Fayette Title and Trust Building, which also houses radio station WMBS. By way of killing time until Harvey got into his office, I talked to some of the boys there at WNBS, including Bill Freeze of the News Bureau. Anything in my line ever happened around these parts, Bill? Uh, like maybe Mrs. John Stacy Minot's death wasn't so natural after all? Well, now, what does that mean? Oh, come on now, Dollar. Why else would Harv Tilson send for somebody like you? Are you saying that she was murdered? Well, wouldn't you murder an old dame like that for a million dollars insurance? I mean, if you could make sure they'd never be able to pin it on you, wouldn't you? Well, now, Bill... Well, I mean, I don't mean you, Dollar. Well, oh, thanks. Just whom do you mean? I mean that new secretary, that Danny Pringle. Mrs. Miner's secretary? Yeah, yeah, Danny Pringle. Handled her correspondence, her investments, her stocks and bonds, paid her bills, that sort of thing. He was the only person, Dollar, who could possibly know everything, and I do mean everything, about all her affairs. And Danny Pringle. Yeah, and if he didn't somehow persuade her, um, force her to change her will at the last minute and leave everything to him, I'll leave my shirt, initials and all. You, uh, know this Pringle pretty well? Well, I know all I need to about him, put it that way. But you have no proof that he killed Mrs. Miner. Proof? No, no, but figure it out, Dollar. Now, why would a smart cookie like him tie up with a decrepit old dowager like her in the first place? Now, he's not one of these la-dee-da male secretary types, if you know what I mean. Believe me. Well, so maybe she paid him well. Her? I mean, she? Don't kid yourself. She was so tight-fisted. Why, do you know that her niece, Dora, Dora Minot, that's her only living relative, that Dora's had to play housekeeper and nurse and everything else for the old lady all these years and for nothing? And all because it saved the old lady a few bucks not having to hire a nurse? And Mrs. Miner has left Dollar nothing? Not according to this new will they found. Everything, Dollar, and most of it's the insurance. Everything goes to Danny Pringle. And you think he killed her for it, hmm? And to keep it from going to Dora, who really deserves it. Oh, Bill. Uh, yeah. Two minutes. Yeah, right. Thanks, Rod. Now, uh, Bill, tell me, what is your beef against Danny Pringle? You really want to know? Yes. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing at all. It's, it's just that... Well, if he gets away with this, if he gets all that money, well, it's wrong, that's all. That's all. Well, what do you mean by that? Anything else to tell me about this thing, Lou? Yeah. Yeah, plenty. But I just got to do a news broadcast. I'm on the air in just a minute. Yeah, sure. Don't let me keep it. Now, listen now. Uh, after you've seen Harp Tilson, uh, well, maybe you want to talk some more about this, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I will. Yes, Dolly, you're right. Bill has been working hard to get this Danny Pringle held for murder. I see. Why? Well, I agree with him. Pringle had plenty of reason for wanting her dead. 
He made no bones about it. The only reason he took a job with that contemptuous old crone was in the hope of latching on to some of her money. Most of it's insurance. Yes, so I understand. And now that we've found out that she'd suddenly made a new will cutting off her niece, Dora. Well, Harv, is there any real evidence that Bill could be right, that Pringle might have killed Mrs. Minot? Dr. Hugo Bessem, one of the finest pathologists in this part of the country, examined the body and said that she died of natural causes. Oh? Doesn't Bill know that? He knows it all right. Well, then why does he keep on accusing Danny Pringle? Dora. What? Bill is in love with Dora Minot. Oh, I see. You see what? Well, a new will, you said. That's right. Cutting off Dora. Yeah. Leaving the estate, mostly insurance, to... You know, wait a minute. Bill? In love with Dora Minot, in spite of the fact that he thought she was going to inherit a million bucks or so, or because of it. Oh, now, Dora... So didn't Bill have, or... Think he had a good reason for wanting Mrs. Minot out of the way? Oh, now, wait a minute, Don. Are you saying that Bill Freeze killed Mrs. John Minot to marry Dora and get his hands on the insurance? Well, that's a possibility, isn't it? If. If what? Well, if Dr. Besson hadn't said that she died of natural causes. Well, he could be wrong, couldn't he? Well, yes, yes, I suppose so. Well, what do you plan to do? Right now, let's forget about murder for a minute. In a way, if you've implied... Oh, no, no, I haven't implied a thing. I have simply said that as long as Bill Freeze thought Mrs. Minert was going to leave the insurance to her niece, and as long as Bill figured on marrying Dora... He still does, I understand. He had just as much reason for wanting the old lady out of the way as Danny Pringle had. Right? Well, I... I suppose so. Unless... Unless, of course. Bill somehow knew that she had changed her beneficiary. Well, nobody knew about that new will until the day Mrs. Minot died. Not even Dora? Not even Dora. You didn't know? After all, if the bulk of her money is in the insurance policy... The uh, policy states that the beneficiary is to be the heir to her estate, as specified in her will. I see. She wrote it herself, by the way. Oh? Yep. She'd pecked it out on a typewriter all by herself. Then she'd signed it had it witnessed by a cleaning woman and her husband, and that was that. Oh, did you uh, check to see if it would hold up in court? Yes, I checked it out with an attorney at company expense. And that will, Dollar, named only Dora. But now there's a new one. Yes, naming Danny Pringle as the sole heir. And it just doesn't make sense. Dora cared for, nursed her along for years, was the only person who deserved a sin from Mrs. Minor. So what did she end up with a slap in the face? Where did you find the new will? Dora found it. Where? In the safety deposit box at the bank. It was listed in both their names. Well, I thought those boxes were automatically sealed when somebody died. Well, Dora dug into it before anyone else knew that her aunt was dead. Oh. Well, it sounds like she was gunning for the old lady's insurance, too. Well, could you blame her? She deserved a dollar. Still does. Anyhow, when she, when she found this new will, she was so upset by the way she was cut off with nothing that she, she brought it to me and asked what could be done about it. I had to tell her nothing. What I'd like to have done was tell her to burn it up and say nothing about it. Because it's wrong, Dollar, it's all wrong. Now, don't tell me you're kind of sweet on Dora, too. I am not, but I do believe in justice. Don't you see, unless this new will is a phony, a forgery, and it isn't, Danny Pringle's going to walk off with over a million dollars that ought to go to Dora. Unless that new will is a phony. Where is it, Harv? In the hands of an attorney appointed by the court to handle the estate. But when she brought it here to show me, I made a quick photostat. You'd like to see it? Yes. Yes, I certainly would. All right. Here. And here, here's a stat of the earlier will. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pretty lousy typing job, both of them. I told you, she pecked them out herself. And her fingers were all cramped up with arthritis these past few years. But you can see the typing is the same, including the same repeated errors. And it's funny she didn't let Pringle type out this later one for her. After all, that was his job. And as long as she was leaving everything to him, well, apparently, for, for some reason or other, she wanted to keep it from him. At least he claimed he had no inkling she was leaving him everything. Well, that doesn't seem likely, does it? Well, who knows with an eccentric old biddy like her. The point is she made out both wills herself. 
Do you see the signatures? Not only hers, but the witnesses match perfectly on both documents. Mm, that's so. Well. And these witnesses, um, Marjorie Durkin, John Durkin. Marjorie came in to do the heavy cleaning for her once a week. Not much good, but uh, after all, Mrs. Minor had only paid her two or three bucks a day. Did you ask her if she has any idea why Mrs. Minor made this change? It's the first thing I thought of, Dollar. But I found out that the Durkins died about a month ago. Hit and run, going home one night. Well, hit and run, huh? When was that, Hans? November 7th. Mm -hmm. I see. What? Well, it was only a couple of days after this new will was made. It's funny. Well, it's uh, certainly nothing to get suspicious about. Isn't it? Is it? Well, hit and run, you said. That's right. And with them out of the way, nobody can prove they didn't witness a second will. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, if one of these was a phony, this last one, but... Yeah, but look at them. And the police agree, not only the signatures, but even the sloppy typing. And typing wouldn't be hard to imitate, provided the same machine was used. Uh -huh. Har, yeah. tell me this. Yeah. Dora. Yeah. Did she, by any chance, kind of go for this Danny Pringle? She did not. Those two hated each other. And I told you that she and Bill Fries are, are practically engaged. All right, then tell me this. What? Is Dora broken up over the death of her aunt? She is not. She isn't? Now, don't get me wrong, Dollar. She's a nice girl. She started out nursing Mrs. Minard out of pity for her. Started out? Yes. Yeah. And then when the old crow wouldn't let her go, became more demanding, more abusive... Well, I'm sure that Dora would be the first to admit she stayed on in the hope of some reward when Mrs. Minor died. She'd been told about the first will, but she didn't know about the new one. Not until she opened that safe deposit box. Anything else, huh? That's the whole story. Okay. I guess you're right. There's something very fishy about this whole thing. There certainly is. And with over a million dollars in found, maybe this last will is a phony... I don't see how it possibly could be. But if it isn't, if Mrs. Minot was murdered, in spite of what Dr. Besson said, well, it kind of looks as though I have three people to work on, doesn't it? Danny Pringle, Bill Freeze, and Dora Minot. <laughs> I discussed Mrs. Minot's death with the police. And they politely suggested that instead of wasting their time, I talk with Dr. Hugo Besson. Now, since Mrs. Minot had been alone at the time of her death, he'd been authorized to make a routine autopsy. But his autopsy, the doctor told me, had been far from routine. That is, after he'd found out about the new and completely unexpected will. The result? Mrs. Minnie Minot died of natural causes. Period. End of any question of murder. I drove my rental car over to the Minot Hall, the big old place just off the north end of Bailey Avenue. Unfortunately, the only one there when I arrived was Dora Minot, the niece. She was in her late 20s, I'd say. Tall, good-looking blonde. Please forgive the dirty apron, Mr. Dollar. Oh, that's quite all right. I've been trying to get things straightened out around this old barn now that Aunt Minnie has gone. And do you know something? I've been poking around rooms I've never been in before. Well, I thought you'd been taking care of Mrs. Minot for some years, Dora. Oh, I have. In the mistaken belief there'd be some recompense for all the... the... All the one. Oh. I shouldn't talk about it, Mr. Dollar. I mean, the way I've been thinking. And please don't ask me to talk about Mr. Daniel Pringle. Well, why not? I'd rather have him tell you how he arranged to have me cut off from her estate. Oh, is he? Oh, he's around. Just went out to get some cigarettes. And he'll stay around, too, until things are all settled. Just to make sure I don't walk off with something he doesn't want to give me. Out of the goodness of his heart. As though he had a heart. But tell me this, Please, Dora. I... I don't want to talk about it. Didn't you ask me how come I haven't seen some of the rooms in this house before? Did I? Look. Look at these keys. A different lock on every room in the house. And she kept these tied to her waist kept them under the pillow at night. But you had a key to the safe deposit box. Only because she didn't trust Danny Pringle. And somebody had to be able to go and check on the stock certificates and things. I found the new will folded up in a stock certificate. So that's how it got in the safe deposit box. What? Where was the first will kept? 
Oh, I think in a file here in this room. I see. Mr. Pringle produced it to show the date when the police were here. Do you want to look for it? Is uh, this her type letter? Oh, no, no, that's Mr. Pringle's. And if he comes back and finds that I've unlocked the door to this room of his, maybe we'd better leave now. Well, then uh, you don't use this machine. <laughs> Never. He'd have a fit. Besides, this is the first time I've been in here. And isn't this from a mess? But Mrs. Minert could get in. Oh, yes. She told me that she wrote her will on this machine. I mean, the first one that was to leave me everything. But why she had to go and write another, and only after she knew that she was going to die. Perhaps I could tell you why, Dora. Mr. Pringle. What business have you here in my room? Who is this man? Get out of here, both of you. Are you afraid we might find something incriminating, Pringle? Incriminating? Don't be absurd. Who are you? Johnny Dollar, special investigator for the insurance company. Oh, and here are my credentials. Oh. Oh, I see. Now, of course, I can get a search warrant if necessary. Not at all necessary, Mr. Dollar. Of course not. Well, then you don't mind if I look around. Not at all. Please help yourself. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid things are in a bit of a mess, though. I never was too good at filing and that sort of thing. You were going to tell me why Mrs. Minor suddenly decided to leave everything to you. Was I? Well, it was entirely unexpected, I must say. I'll bet it was. Now, Dora... But go ahead, tell him. I'd like to hear it, too. Well, it's really quite simple, Mr. Dollar. I took this job to get what I could out of the old girl. I thought she was richer than she was. I have a certain amount of, well, charm for people like her. It's worked before, and I thought... It has. Um, yes, it has. And I thought it might work with her. You rotten But gunk. it didn't. Nothing could charm that eccentric old crackpot. So I planned to leave her. But then came this last illness, and she became such a pathetic person that, well, out of sheer pity for her, I relented. More than that, I repented. Mr. Dollar, that's the most... That's now, the just, biggest... just wait now, Dora. I believe Mrs. Minot realized how I changed in my feelings toward her, that she appreciated it, and that she took this way to show her appreciation. Mr. Dollar, that's a lie. Now, Dora. You know it is, Pringle. Can you prove that? Isn't her new will that you found that I didn't even know about, isn't that proof that I'm telling the truth? Oh. Uh, tell me just one thing, Pringle. Certainly. Could anyone else have used this typewriter of yours? And I'm assuming it's the one used to write those wills. I'm certain that she used my machine, Mr. Dollar. Could anyone else have used it? No. No one else could possibly have come in here. No one else could have used this typewriter except Mrs. Minert, of course, and myself. You're absolutely sure of that? Yes. And the police examination showed that both wills were typed on it. Therefore, only she could have written the new one. Wrong. What? I saw those wills, the same typographical errors. Well, naturally. The same signatures, exactly the same. I held the photostatic copies up to the light, one on top of the other. The signatures matched perfectly, both of them. Of course. Of course not, Pringle. What are you talking about? It's impossible for anyone to write a signature, even his own name, write it twice, exactly the same. Mr. Dollar. Utterly impossible. Well, you're wrong. You must be well, wrong. Well, try it. Here. Try it. Now, listen. Not here. even your own name. Now, look here. So you, you wrote a new will naming you as the sole beneficiary. You traced the signatures, both of them. Well, you don't know what you're then talking about. Then you realize about. that you'd have to get rid of the witnesses. To the first will, John and Marjorie Durkin, so they couldn't deny having signed the second one. Hit and run, huh? I'll bet you ran after you killed them. Yes. Yes, I did. Mr. Dollar. But you'll never live to tell it. Oh, put that gun down. Over there beside him, Dora. Now, come on, Pringle. You don't think I'd come here alone, do you, without the police? What? All right, Sergeant. Here he is for you. Police! No! That's right! Pringle! What police? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's the oldest gag in the world, Dora. But amateurs still fall for it. <laughs> strength of his statement to us. Well, I hope they do pin the murder of the Durkin body. As for that second will, it can't be genuine, simply because of those two sets of absolutely identical signatures. 
Expense account total, including the fare back to Hartford, one twenty nine thirty. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. to a pack of new king-size Philip Morris Commanders. See what a difference cleaner tobacco makes in your smoking pleasure. You see, Commanders are made on a new machine, the Mark 8, that takes fine, rich tobacco and... <laughs> gently vacuum cleans it. What does that mean to you? It means new king-size Philip Morris Commanders have the cleanest tobacco ever rolled in a cigarette. And the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Noticeably better. Why don't you try a pack and see for yourself? I'm a commander. Welcome aboard. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Oh, first, a word for radio station WKAT. It's the new CBS radio affiliated station in Miami, Florida. We're glad to have them with us on the network, to have them provide the people of Greater Miami with a different sound of CBS radio's outstanding program. Welcome, WKAT. Next week, a storybook murder that suddenly comes true. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddish, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr. Heard in our cast were Lawson Kirby as Harvey Tilton, Robert Dryden as Pringle, Joan Loring as Dora, and Larry Haynes as Bill Free. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is our Hannah Speak. Have a happy habit, Sunday through Friday, Arthur Godfrey time on the CBS Radio Network. When can you get a nationally famous new stereo console phonograph and a record library for Christmas at half price? When it's Columbia's Christmas bonus special, now featured at Music House, 217 Kings Highway, Haddonfield, New Jersey. Here's a legitimate $295 value for only $148.88. You get a famous Columbia stereo console phonograph with four-speed stereo record changer, long-life diamond needle, Famous Columbia CD cartridge and six great speakers in a luxurious decorator-style cabinet. Plus, a six-record stereo library featuring famous recording stars, and that's worth $35 itself. By spe special arrangement with Columbia, Music House at 217 Kings Highway in Haddonfield, New Jersey, is able to offer this $295 value for half price, only $148.88 for the stereo console and record library. Come in to the Music House 217 Kings Highway in Haddonfield soon and collect your Columbia Christmas bonus special. Quantities are limited, and this big bonus value is moving fast. WCAU, WCAU FM, Philadelphia. Major League Baseball in the Sportsorama Spotlight with Straight from the Shoulder talk about our national pastime. April 6th, the first Sportsorama program with Red Barber on the CBS Radio Network. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.